Well, this is new. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first ever double episode of Afternoon Dreams, which may or may not become the standard for this series moving forward. These are two games I've been looking to do reviews on for a while now. Both are works in progress that each creator seems to have an intent on finishing, as they do receive regular updates. In the end, I decided there wasn't enough to fill a full episode, so I decided to take a page from the rest of the Dreams community on YouTube and combine them into one. So with all that said, let's get started with Caillou's Journey. And no, I'm not talking about the internet's most hated cartoon character. Caillou's Journey is about a young woman named Caillou with a somewhat solitary life, but apparently has a mysterious past that is coming back to haunt her, and a quest to go on, the full scope of which has yet to reveal itself. Also, she has fire powers, for some reason. The majority of the game is about collecting items and solving puzzles. There is some combat later on, but I'll get to that later. The first chapter of the game has you collecting flowers to upgrade your storage so you can collect enough sticks and a fish to unlock the next segment of the game. The fish are just in bodies of water and you can sneak up on them or force them into corners to catch them, but the flowers and sticks require a bit of looking. The sticks are all in one place, but getting there takes some time to find the correct route. The flowers are in some pretty out of the way places, but you'll see a trail that points directly to one when you're close to it. Once you know where to go, it's just a matter of not getting your fish stolen by this bird. Once you've completed your collection, you need to craft a torch to burn through some overgrown doors and get to the next area. And there are some altars you can leave fish or sticks at to boost your stats once you don't need them. You can also go underwater, but Caillou can't swim. Instead, she just sort of walks slowly like she's wearing iron boots, but still floats around. Oh, and Chapter 2 is entirely underwater, so get used to that. Though, it also gives you one other method of traversal, that being this big fish that you can tame. But for some reason, after less than a minute of riding, the fish kicks you off, and you need to tame it again. I have no idea why you can't just ride it for as long as you need to and press a button to get off, especially since you need the fish to get to the next chapter. Also, your torches work underwater for some reason. If you ever find yourself stuck, just keep looking for another wall to burn down or a source of firewood, and you'll figure out a way forward. A bit tedious, but satisfying enough when you do find the way forward. However, the part of the game I am most split on is the combat. You see, other games have you just swing your sword and do damage. This game, on the other hand, forces you to get close to an enemy, press a button to trigger the attack, use the motion sensor to target a specific body part, then perform a quick time event in order to maximize the damage, and if you're a bit too early or too late, you miss. Oh, and be careful to avoid the boss's attacks, or you'll have to evaporate the water at the campfire, or else you're basically a sitting duck. You can also set the ground on fire, but I could not figure out what the point of this was. I do not get why combat needed to be this convoluted. And before some recent updates to refine the menu system, I had no idea how it worked and I rage quit. In its current state, it's not totally unmanageable, it's actually kind of fun once you get the hang of it, but I still think it would be better just to have a standard attack button. As for potential future additions, aside from more updates to the UI to make it more intuitive, especially graying out options that are not available and maybe providing hints on what you need for that option, I am genuinely interested in the story, and I very much look forward to seeing it expanded upon. Who is this queen? What is the curse? Who actually is Dorian, and what is her relationship with Caillou? Also, what's this recurring motif of fire and water, and why are those Caillou and Dorian's powers? Also, what else is in this world? Well, I suspect we'll find out in the future. Alright, now on to Jacob and Jonas. This one is implied to have a bit more of a story, but for now we don't have much to go off of beyond two brothers and a quest. Though the world is looking to be a bit more populated than Caillou's Journey, and there is a lot more focus on combat with this one. Thankfully, the game has a tutorial which makes my job a lot easier. Traversing is simple. You play as whichever brother you want as you venture through the landscape, perhaps with a bit of light, or using your dash to break certain barriers. And if you get separated, just push a button and teleport one brother to the other. The only thing of note here is that you need to enter a second menu and use a jump potion to clear certain obstacles. However, there are other potions, including your standard health potion, and potions that grant you stat buffs. But traversing doesn't matter too much since the focus of the game is combat. Movement overall is a bit floaty, but the combat animations are quick and precise. Regardless of which brother you play as, you can lock onto the nearest enemy, hit it with a basic attack, dodge, and block. But each brother also has a few specific abilities. Jacob can attack a nearby enemy with his wooden sword, but he relies more on powerful spells with just a bit more range to them, like summoning a tornado or enlarging his hammer. 
He can also summon your guide, the Light Arcane Allen, which gives him a second moveset. Instead of a basic attack, he can now pelt the enemy with rushes of air or use a healing breeze. So if you need to heal and don't want to waste a health potion, this is a good alternative since it doesn't have a mana bar and it comes with a long-ranged attack. And once you've regained enough health, you can go back to wailing on the enemy again with your hammer. Jonas has a similar, but more aggressive moveset. He does have a ranged attack called Sky Calling, but it's not that useful. Instead of any additional spells, he has a simple power attack, and the ability to temporarily transform into a fiery Lin Wang, a form that grants him invincibility and can harm enemies on contact. Just make sure to be careful and have that block ready in a pinch. Outside of combat, the world you venture through is actually pretty well put together. It's more than big enough to separate each major location you visit, and the locations you do visit are visually distinct. There are plenty of enemies you fight, and you've got a compass and a waypoint to help you find your way around. In addition, the world also runs in an in-game clock with a seasonal cycle, which changes lighting over time. While we don't have many locales right now, what we have seen is promising, and I'm interested in seeing what the rest of the world is like. As for potential future additions, the final game is supposedly going to have five areas to explore with bosses to fight. Also, I hope we'll be getting more enemies than this stupid golem to fight over and over again. That said, there is also a leveling system, so we could see a system of character progression and possibly new abilities to unlock, or higher levels of the ones we currently have. But personally, I'm still wondering what exactly King Nimrod, yes, that's his name apparently, actually did, and what is so dangerous about these five major areas. Only time will tell. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.